Hi everybody, uh, today I'm going to talk to you about Hadoop and big data. So up to now when we've talked about SQL databases, we've talked about it on a sort of small scale, you know, populating your Grace Shopper, so maybe 50, 100 products. But Hadoop is built to handle something much bigger known as big data. So what is Hadoop? It is an open source Java-based framework that's designed to process and store extremely large data sets using distributed computing. Um, so what are the benefits of Hadoop? Well, it uses cheaper hardware than you would have with a traditional, what's known as data warehouse. And I'm going to be covering some background information about what a data warehouse is and some other key concepts in a little bit. It's also very reliable because you're using distributed computing. You're also storing multiple copies across the different nodes. Uh, so you have duplicated data. So if one computer fails, then you still have the data stored in the cloud. It's designed, as I mentioned, to handle extremely large uh, amounts of data on the order of uh, terabytes or even petabytes. And it's often used to store unstructured data. So when we've used SQL databases, we've had you know, our columns and we'll have an integer or a string or something like that. But unstructured data could be a video. It could be an image. Um, it could be the notes that one of your salespeople took with a customer and was just jotting doodles and notes. And you can just load that into a Hadoop system. And it's able to get meaningful information out of that. So why should you care about this? Well, it's the standard for processing big data. It's used at Google, Facebook, eBay, Amazon, technology companies, financial companies. Uh, the Obama campaign in 2012 famously used it, uh, a Hadoop system, in order to target uh, where their get out the vote efforts should happen based on finding patterns, analyzing the big data that they were able to scrape. So it was uh, born, as I mentioned, it was open source, but it was born at Apache uh, based on white papers written at Google. So as I mentioned, I'm going to cover some key concepts. The first is an operational versus an analytical database. The second is a SQL database like we've been using uh, versus a SQL data warehouse. And lastly, a data lake versus a data warehouse. So an operational database. An operational database is optimized for transactions. Uh, it's for, uh, for example, your checking account. When you're making a purchase, your checking account updates after you make every purchase. So it needs to happen fast. You make a purchase, you want it to show an updated balance right away. So a thing to note about it is that aggregated totals are not included on that database. So when we were using the SQL databases in our projects, we would have to do a, a custom request to find what the total amount of the prices that we have stored in our column for a gray shopper, for example. It also uses a denormalized tables, which means that we have duplicated tables across, or duplicated data across tables. So you don't use inner joins because the process of doing an inner join slows things down. So if you want your checking account, it would have, if you would, you wouldn't have a separate user table and a separate accounts table for your checking account. You'd have your name stored on the on the checking account as well, on the, where the the checking account information is. So the downside about doing it, storing things this way is that there isn't referential integrity. So if you have a typo of, of your name in the checking account column and it doesn't match with your user account, then that's going to mean that when you do want to perform an inner join on that, it's going to fail. And it's a write many, read many process, which means that you're going to be overwriting your checking account balance. Every time you make a purchase, you deduct money from your checking account. That means that that is going to go down, and so you're going to overwrite that. Now compare that with an analytic database. Uh, that is optimized for analysis. So the aggregated totals would be calculated on the data load. And you'd frequently use inner joins. And if you have any uh, frequently made uh, requests, you'd use a, what's called a view, where you basically preload that inner join. Uh, use either an unmaterialized or materialized view, which honestly doesn't matter for this talk. Uh, it's a write once and read many. So this is historical data. You're not going to want to overwrite what you had. So for example, uh, at the end of day checking account balance, you would store that as a historical record. And you wouldn't ever change that. You just have that as reference. And you can make uh, analysis based off of that, looking, for example, at the past couple months of your data. 
So I mentioned a SQL data warehouse. So a SQL data warehouse is an analytic database. Uh, it uses a set data schema. So just like how we have our table structures in the SQL databases that we're using, where we have the columns preset, it, it's just like that. And the life cycle of a SQL data warehouse, you have the, you receive the data files. Like let's say that I want to uh, have a centralized data warehouse for all the checking account information from, say, Brazil, and I want to put it into a centralized database. It's a data warehouse. So I'd receive the data file I want to load into the data warehouse. Then I would perform what's called an ETL. So I'd take the information from that file that I received, I'd transform it so that it would fit into my set data schema. So the file that you're receiving might have the columns in a different order, might have different information. It might have a first name and a last name column. And in your data schema, you have just a concatenated name. And so you have to perform that transformation so that you're able to fit it into the column as expected. And then you load it. You save it into your data warehouse. Um, and when you do this, you also generate what's known as metadata in order to track where the information is in each of the columns. So that's the, the, the data warehouse is the traditional way to store large amounts of data. It's very slow, and you have to actually do the process of manually changing the data in order to fit it into your scheme. Now compare that to a data lake, aka Hadoop. This is what Hadoop is primarily used for, is the data lake concept. So it's also an analytic database. The files are just loaded as, in, as is. You receive the file, and you just save it to the Hadoop system. And then those files are directly accessed as if they were tables. And you use the metadata that you create when you save those files to know where things are. So you would save what the column location is within the file and which file has the kind of information you want. So if you have years stored in certain files, then it would know what files to find those years in and what column within those files it would be. So what is Hadoop good for? It's good for storing large amounts of data analyzing large amounts of data, and testing hypotheses, hypotheses using historical data. So uh, voluminous data. So like, uh, when I say voluminous data, that could include historical data or machine-generated data. For example, if you want to track every click that happened on your website, and you have millions and billions of people clicking on Google, and you want to know where everyone clicked and then form patterns and analysis off of that, then that's something that you would want to store or unstructured data, as I mentioned, images, sounds, videos, or handwritten notes, or social media, if you want to get uh, information that you generated from Twitter or Facebook. Um, so how does Hadoop work? Well, it processes and stores information distributed across many nodes. There are three components. There's the job tracker, there's the name nodes, and there's the data nodes. So the job tracker, its responsibility is to farm out information requests and processing across different nodes in the cluster. So it says, I want to perform this sort of uh, algorithm. I want it to be run. And it basically tracks where that information and request is sent. The name nodes stores the directory tree of all the files in this file system. So it knows where the columns are. It knows where those files are that have those columns. And then the data nodes themselves have the data. That's where the bulk of the uh, storage is, is in the data node. So this allows for parallel processing, storage redundancy, and scalability. Because you just need to increase the number of data nodes, um, then you can store more data. So how does Hadoop work? So some example, an example software framework is MapReduce. This is one of the things that the job tracker would use, is, some, is MapReduce. There are three components to it. There's the map process, there's the shuffle process, and there's the reduce process. So thanks to this video that I found from Learning Tree International, it's going to give a, an example of a data flow during map reduce. Um, so this is, uh, the, the, we're just doing a simple thing here. We're doing a, a counting the dates that occur across files over many files, okay? Uh, so we have these files that are in input file A, B, C, where it ha we have these different uh, files that have different years, and we want to count the number of instances we have in each of those files. So we've counted, I wanted to pause that. So 
So we want to count the number of instances of those years occurring across the files. So I hope to God this is playing. No. Ah. OK, and so it's going to form out the information processing across the nodes. There we go. So basically, it, it, it accounts the number of times that those dates occurred during the map phase. Each data node has an input file, reads the input file in, and then it writes uh, as a set of key value pairs of the year and the number of occurrences from within each of those files. Then the shuffle phase occurs, where uh, Hadoop automatically sends all the, the like data to a different processor. In this case, the 2000 data goes to the data node 1, 2001 goes to data node 2, and 2002 goes to data node 3. So it just it takes the instances and sends it to the separate nodes. And then it performs the reduce phase, where it just sums up all the different instances of that like type of data. So this is a very simple example. Uh, and it's with a very small data set, but over a larger scale, it would be uh, much more efficient and much more useful to actually use a Hadoop system. Um, so just I very briefly will mention that the, the Hadoop ecosystem is open source and it's very large. So you have, these are just some example uh, software that you can use in order to run. Uh, I mentioned that you can use, uh, that it's typically a data lake type of archetype over uh, that you would run on Hadoop, but you can also run SQL on it. You could run a traditional SQL database, data warehouse. Um, and if you want to find more information about the uh, Hadoop ecosystem, you can find it on this website. Thank you very much.